So the next thing we're going to look at is the, the rendering um, that comes with the new version of Cinema 4D. So here I have the landscape. Uh, I've got my objects sitting above the landscape. And what I've assigned to the sphere as a material is an object with some displacement added to it. Uh, for those of you who aren't really familiar with displacement, basically what it is is a way of adding detail to the surface of objects. It's sort of like a bump map or a normal map, except it actually changes the geometry. Um, what it does in, uh, in sub-polygon displacement is it adds polygons to the surface to make sure that the surface continuity is maintained. So. Uh, as you add more detail in terms of, um, say, you're using something like a, a noise map, um, the, the detail in that noise map causes an increase in the number of polygons so, so that uh, that detail can be rendered properly. Now, that's something that's calculated at render time. And uh, in the old versions of Cinema 4D or... Uh, that used to be quite expensive. Well, the new versions had some optimizations to displacement, uh, which is pretty welcome. And it's also had uh, the addition of something um, which really improves displacement performance, and that's the addition of render instances. What these are uh, is uh, basically a duplicate that's calculated at render time. What it does is, uh, whereas in Cinema 4D, 10.5, what it would have done, or 11, uh, if you had all of these clone objects, it would have calculated every single one of them individually when it was calculating displacement. And that could take a really long time. I mean, it even seemed to uh, compound sometimes, like the, the second object takes longer than the first object, and so on and so on, because it's trying to store all this stuff in memory. Um, now, uh, it's really just calculating one object and then uh, you know, sticking that object in different positions. So the memory use is much more optimized and the calculation overall is a lot faster. And to create render instances in the cloner object, all you need to do is check on that checkbox right there. And now we have render instances. So if we play the simulation again uh, to a point where we have, you know, several objects in our frame and hit the render button, The, you can see the displacement is calculated very quickly and then the whole render is done in about seven seconds. Now I don't have any lights or anything in this scene. If I had an occlusion it would be a lot longer. But in older versions of Cinema 4D, just preparing the displacement might have taken, for a scene like this, you might have been looking at about half an hour per frame rendering, where now you're looking at seven seconds for the entire thing. Another thing um, that they've done that's also a, a very big improvement in the rendering uh, is they've improved the anti-aliasing speed. And for me, this was a huge, huge uh, addition because uh, anti-aliasing speed is probably the biggest determinant of quality, especially when you're dealing with uh, film quality renders. Uh, when you're looking at that kind of resolution, 2K or 4K resolution, uh, anti-aliasing is critical to the image quality. Um, without it, images start to look soft, they start to look CG, um, texture quality doesn't show up, and it's, it's very hard to create an integrated image at that resolution. The fact that they've improved the anti-aliasing speed means that you can increase anti-aliasing quality without um, having a, a huge hit uh, on your render time. So uh, these are all big big improvements. And I think, uh, for the most part, make for a worthwhile upgrade. I'm going to take a look now at some of the smaller stuff that they've done. Uh, one of the things that they've added uh, in post is a, is a filter that allows you to make post adjustments. Now, um, you can do this for uh, most parts of uh, the image you can actually uh, create. Uh, layers in the image that would be exported to Photoshop if you were using multi-pass, uh, the multi-pass features. Uh, you can do adjustments to gamma, you can do individual color, color adjustments to gamma. I, I think all this stuff is okay. It allows you to make decent adjustments. I, I don't think it's stuff that you wouldn't have done uh, or that I woun't have done anyway inside a compositing application. Um, 
I would much rather see this uh, as adjustments you're making to post effects like depth of field or vector motion blur. I think that would be a lot more valuable than what they have here. Um, but maybe this is a start and they're going to start implementing the other stuff. Uh, I don't really know, but I certainly think that there's um, better things that they could be doing with their time uh, than this. I, I think when you the other improvements they've added, I, I have the same sort of opinion. I think most blind, it looks to me like something that somebody was playing around with and they decided to add. Same with poly effects. I think that these are things that are, um, uh, you know, I, I've worked with them a little bit now and the, the use of them is limited. They can certainly, all this stuff can be done uh, using other techniques and I think what they're trying to do is, um, I guess, uh, make some easy, fun to play with tools, and, and I think you know maybe certain people will find them valuable. But I would much rather see them focusing on creating stuff that's a, a system that's much more flexible. Um, for me, right now, while I think that the the performance of a lot of the stuff they have is very very good, and the overall workflow uh, of the software is very very good, I think if they start moving towards uh, a system where all this stuff is integrated inside something like Expresso, like a node view, where you can manipulate the entire scene, including materials and lights and dynamic systems, and you can you know change what you're viewing at any given time. That would be a much more flexible, much more powerful system that would uh, really bring uh, Cinema 4D up to the level of something like Softimage or uh, maybe even Houdini, where uh, so much of the system is open. I also think that would be a much more artist-driven system. I think that, um, you know, right now, some of these tools are a little bit too focused on making things easy and fast and uh, impressive in the first kind of five to ten minutes that you use them. But then in terms of building really complicated projects, um, they only go so far. And I think that uh, one of the great things about Expresso is it's uh, it's a very artist-friendly way to create very uh, complex behaviors, and I think that they should spend their time working everything into that. So uh, I think if uh, if you're somebody who's been using Cinema 4D for a while, if you're on 10.5 or you're on Cinema 4D 11, I think it's a really worthwhile upgrade, and I think it's a worthwhile upgrade simply because uh, the render really uh, the render has really come up to par with uh, plug-in renderers like V-Ray. Uh, and final render um, and uh, if you are you know weighing a, a decision between this and something like soft um, then I think the decision's a little tougher I think that you know there are other uh, other packages out there that offer uh, offer more options than cinema 4d does at this point